and it's Monday night in the back cave. <laughs> so one more second. I'm almost there. All right, look at that. I'm actually ahead of myself tonight. You are. I am. It's amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I'm usually posting still, so everybody can still share while I'm doing this and get us out there. We're uh, just a couple of uh, quick announcements. Um, before we jump in here, and I have a special guest tonight. I have Norlene Rod here with me uh, in the, uh, I almost called it the bunker. <laughs> in, in, it feels like a bunker in the, on the journey program. Yes. So here we are. Um, so I got a few things I wanted to say. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kind of drunk. That's what's wrong with me now. Uh, in the Holy Ghost, of course. <laughs> um, Mm, let me think clearly for a moment. Um, um, let me think. What was I going to say? <laughs> I know. It's um, 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 um. Oops. Here we are <laughs> on the journey. <laughs> HDM The Journey. And I just wanted to make a couple of quick announcements to say that if you want to try and find us, we are on the, uh, <clears throat> let's see, <laughs> uh, there, there's our website, <laughs> www.hcm-stratford.org. Okay. And so you can go there and see all kinds of things <laughs> and some other things you've never seen <laughs> and uh anyways enjoy <laughs> knowing a little more about us plus not just only that uh there are some podcasts and different things and then you can go to did i give them the address i yes, think i did it's okay right there. oh there it is beautiful then you can go to Ah, there it is. www.youtube.com forward slash capital G Grace and capital T Truth, capital J, capital B, Brown, because that's my name. So then you can go there and that will get you on our YouTube page. And the YouTube page has a whole catalog of different things that I've shared that you can jump into, swim, whatever you like, <laughs> and see. Um, <laughs> Check it out. That's all I got to say. Check it out. All right. So, what else? Um, oh, if you're on our YouTube page, and YouTube page, no. If you're on on, on the website, <laughs> hcm-stratford.org, there's a donate button there if you would like to donate an offering um, to HCM The Journey. So we're just switching things up a little now as we are now um, made the transition of where we're jumping into uh, uh, the journey, uh, HCM, which is <laughs> a ministry. <laughs> hey, if you want to donate, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we'll talk more about this later when I'm not quite as wasted. <laughs> Okay, so without any further ado, <laughs> whatever, whatever that all meant, um, <laughs> I just got to say, God is good. What can I say? <laughs> this is called Joy mm -hmm. and New Wine for anybody that's not quite knowing what that is. Okay, and the beautiful thing about that is it's there's no space between us because we're all as one okay. so therefore you can drink as well <laughs> right? right okay so i have norlene rod with me tonight <laughs> here she is <laughs> Hello. Hi, <Nor. laughs> so we have a lot of history <laughs> i wanted to uh ask you pro to start out that uh did i miss anything at the beginning <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so i don't think so okay <laughs> i want to do uh to uh <clears throat> go from the beginning is i i guess i met you in 80 what do you think it was what year was that do you think 
84? Something like that. 81. Yeah, 82, 83. About 80. Like yeah. Okay, so we'll settle on 83. It's in the middle. <laughs> 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 we could do this if we figured out how old your daughter is. Well, you'd be able to, but that's math. Let's not do no, that right I now. Don't want to <laughs> no. Think about that. No. <laughs> we yes. So in about 1983, yes. Norlene came to my house on Erie Street. Yes, I did. When uh, um, I was with uh, a Jubilee at the time, um, and uh, the reason she did is because you had a history. You knew my wife for a long time before that. Like, yes. how old were you guys? You think back in high school? I was in high school. Yeah. When I met her. Right. And we became friends. Right. Yes. <laughs> for a long time. For a very long time. Yes. And still are. So. Yes. yes. And then you went out west for a while. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I went out there to get my crap together. To get your crap together. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Did that yeah. work out for you? <laughs> Somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah. 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 Then I came back and uh, had, and you, uh, had another oh. one with me. Yes. And then, how did that happen? How did you end up? You just decided to look Sue up, right? No. no? Oh, yeah, I did. I, I kind of did. I, I ha when I had the child. Yes. My daughter. Right. <laughs> that one. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, there was something stirring in my heart, and I just thought, you know, I'm sick and tired of the, 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 the life, way, the life I was living. You <laughs> yes. Know, a lot of drugs, a lot of partying, just. Right. Yeah. And I was only what nineteen, maybe nineteen, when I came back with Nana. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, um, but in my heart, deep in my heart, I just thought, enough of this. I, life's got to change. So I thought, well, okay, come back home now with yep. tail between your legs, right? Just, burr, 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 burr. Here I come back home, Mom, and yeah. with a baby now, so, uh, and get my life together. Right. So, long story short, I, you know, went to the bar one night, and I saw her. Sue's brother at the bar. Oh. Just happened. He happened to be there. So I was like, so uh, what's Sue up to late? And he says, well, I don't know if you want to see her anymore. She's <laughs> kind of gone a little religious. And I thought, oh, really? Hmm. I thought, well, where is she? So he told me. So I thought, well, the next day I thought, oh, I'm going to check her out and meet up with her again. Because in mm -hmm. my heart, there was something stirring that I knew. Yeah. I wanted to see her again. And I knew, hmm. Maybe she's into something. And because you cool. guys were good friends, yes. you, you wanted to find out what was she doing. What was she right? doing and what she's up to. And yeah. yeah. Is there something real here? Yeah, exactly. Plus, you had some background, right? Because <laughs> you um, were, um, well, we'll get into that, but mm -hmm. meaning how um, you, well, we could go there now. You have. Um, had time when you were younger where you sensed the Lord and the Lord was speaking to you, right? Oh, from a very young age. Yeah. Very young age. I was encountering God and his love and yeah. the Father's heart, but I was always... But you grew up with... In a very religious, strict, legalistic home. Right. You know, great, wonderful home, you know. Yeah, but they were strongly religious, right? Very much. You couldn't... You gum, you can wear earrings, you can wear makeup. It's very strict. <laughs> yes, you know. Yes. Look at them the wrong way. It was like that was a sin. So right. Very strict. Wow. Yeah. So here you're having these experiences with God in a, a way of a loving God, mm -hmm. but yet your your experience of going to where God is, church, yep. is anything but. It's but, much more restrictive. But you know what? You know, when I was younger, I would always, you know, I was always talking to God, you know, and I would hear him very more clearly than yeah. I'm starting to hear him again now that way. But when I was younger, it was always, he just felt like a dad to me back in the day because I was adopted too, right? right. So I had a lot of rejection stuff, but he always seemed very real and close to me. But yet I was being taught that he was this mean guy in the sky that's going to. Where you had you to know, keep the rules yeah, in order rules. to make him happy. Yeah. Yeah. But he seemed happy already to you, yeah, right? Yeah, but I could never understand it. Like, yeah. why would he be this way? And even some of my disciplining was through the word. Right. You know, and I mean physical wow. discipline. You know, wow. it was like spare the rod, spoil the child. So I'd get a good discipline. Good crack. Yeah, good crack. So, and I was always like, this didn't seem like the dad that he had revealed to me years ago. Yeah. 
he didn't, you know, that wasn't to me who daddy was, but yet in the church, I was always being told this is how he is. Very. And these are our authority figures. They mm -hmm. should know. They should know. And they went to church and they went to Bible school and they've done yeah. it all. So yeah. they should know. And, and I have to respect my elders. Right. Right. But yet something inside of me always was. Mm -hmm. So they were telling you <laughs> at times, they were telling you that even what you were feeling was wrong, right? Yeah. And what I was seeing and, you know, yeah. even one time when I was 10, I know nothing about being drunk. Right. But there was a church service and I got drunk in the spirit and these people are saying well she's demonic yeah she's, you know because you know she's got you know native in her so she's demonic she's you know <laughs> it's witchcraft and it was like what a 10 year old i don't know nothing about drinking because obviously i wasn't raised that way right and i was so out of it in god's love that i didn't go to school it was just wow. for a day or two i was just so out of it in his love and presence but yet i was being taught mm. No, he's very rigid. If you don't do this right, if you don't do that right, it's going to be yeah. not good. So so how old <laughs> roughly would you have been, do you think, do you can remember in ballpark when you ten. felt that love? About 10. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing, eh? Yeah, it was. That's you really know? amazing. You know, and knowing that, but yet being taught through the years that, mm -hmm. that was wrong, that, you know, what you were feeling was demonic. And even... You know, I was hearing later on in the years that they were saying, stay away from her because she's demonic because she had this episode. Right. right. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. And then I almost died because of, you know, their belief system of the kidneys had fa were failing and they just believed if you pray, she will be healed. But I almost died. Wow. But God sustained me. So Crazy. Yeah. And I'm here. And I was always laying there going, God, why? They're praying for me. Well, shouldn't they get me help? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little girl maybe going the hospital. Says, maybe the hospital. I should go get some help. So wow, they did get me help, and well, I'm here, obviously. Mm. So yeah. Wow. So then, um, because you felt ostracized in that, is do you think that's why all of a sudden you would turn to your friends? That became like a family, and then you kind of went into the whole drug thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it was rebellion, right? Yeah. Just if this is what God's all about. I don't want this. Right. I don't want this kind of God. Yeah. That's going to be constantly, you know, ridiculing me. And I've always... The was, knowledge of good and evil, right? <clears throat> and I always felt like I had to earn my keep to right. be here on this earth. Yeah. Because of that. Because you, know? you had been adopted. See mm -hmm. how that was all bred mm -hmm. in there, right? That mm -hmm. whole orphan spirit. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And yet God was showing up as a, a child going... <laughs> You know, he You're didn't right. have any obstacles, did he? No, he never had a problem with me. Wow. You know, I was always just, I'm okay. Wow. There was always that in the me, but yet because of the religion and the, you know, constantly, well, the word says this and the word says, well, I'm like, what? I don't know. Yeah. You know. How can you argue with that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because they're the authorities. They're the right. religious leaders and they must know, so. So then you went this route of drugs and partying like many of us did. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> we're looking for solace and, and some sense of belonging. Belonging and love. Which happens for a while with mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. But then you begin to be real messed up. Yep. And you wonder, like, is that all this is, right? Mm -hmm. And then you ended up coming back to Stratford. Um, and then getting a hold of Susan. I, re I can still remember that day, actually. You used a phone booth, called. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you was coming, you and Neanna coming to yeah. the house. And, uh, and then <clears throat> you began to hang out with us, um, and we were in, involved in a charismatic church, and it was really uh, family-oriented, but still was still in that whole structure. And that's what I loved about it because it was in the upper room, right? Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah. Hey? So, and I hung around, and I want to say too, I had hung around with Hell's Angels at, when I lived out west. So right. There was some shady stuff that went on, but still, I was pretty rough around the edges. <laughs> really rough, just. Yeah. But I found when I met you guys again that you guys just accepted me. Right. Just as I am. Like the song, Just As I Am. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, so, and. And same with going to the upper room. It was just like, that's where it was, uptown. And uh, 
Yeah, I could just be me going up there. I mean, yeah, yeah. And I there were work. a lot, a lot of young people coming in those days. Eh? Yeah. It was at the beginning of all that. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, flat flash uh, flash forward. <laughs> I'm still a little long of it. No, no. Um, trying to keep it together. You're there. doing well. Thank you. Um, kind of like when you were 10. That's what's happening uh -huh. to us here, right? Mm -hmm. So then um, we go forward. Um, you end up uh, being around for quite a few years. And then all of a sudden, because of a situation we were involved in, in a, a church to, uh, break, um, you ended up in London, not because of the break, no. but you ended up in London for a while mm -hmm. and still same kind of church mm -hmm. thing, right? But then at some point, um, something happened to you that caused you to question. Mm -hmm. What was that? Do you remember the moment when you all of a sudden, I guess it's not really a moment. It's kind of a gradual thing that makes you begin to go, you know, is there more to this? And for you, probably feeling that 10 year old mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. right? Always has been. Yeah. You know, well, even in that scenario, right? When you yeah. were down there, even in that scenario, th there still wasn't the freedom mm -hmm. that you um, was longing for. That you were longing for. I was just longing for the freedom. I wanted to be real. I was feeling my who I was was gone. Right. You know, it was like, where did Nora go? Right. Where did the Nora go that likes to have fun and likes yeah. to party and likes and and Father God's perfectly fine with that Norlene. Yeah. So I'm really discovering. Well, that's her the again. one he made. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I look back at baby pictures and other stuff. I thought I had fun back then. Yeah. You know that was that's who I am, and I was trying and I was trying to conform, and try to um, be what everybody else wanted me to be. But he was going, I want you to be what who I made you to be. Right. And so there was always that battle. It's like a tension going on, mm -hmm. right? But I don't know if it was so much, it just was, I was just getting sick of religion. Yeah. You know, I just wanted just him. And what, in your, your eyes at that point, what would you call religion? What was it that was? I was getting sick of the same old, he's coming back, which I've heard all my life. Right. Um, the rapture's coming. I heard it all my life. Like all that stuff was like the fire and brimstone yep, stuff. Yeah, all the, and I thought that ain't God. That ain't the God I know. I, and I kept crying out to him, saying, "I want to know the real you, or I don't want to do this no more." Right. And he started showing me the mm -hmm. real him. Wow. You know, I remember one communion at the church in London. You know, and you know the, you know communions are always you know very solemn and sad yep. you know he died he got beaten blah 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 yeah, but yeah. his love hit me that day and i just started crying and laughing and crying and laughing i thought oh my gosh this is so good this yeah. is so rejoicing so wonderful it's just i started feeling him again and that's what i wanted but i kept hearing the same stuff being said and spoken and yeah you know bless the hearts that's but that's not where i was feeling i was right. feeling god saying kind of like come away come on or yeah come on you know that's always the way it's been with me it's been come on let's do something let's do this or go here or, yeah as hard as it is when i did you know it is leave different churches you know it's like when god called us out of jubilee even yeah it was hard but, yeah but it wasn't you know what i mean once you listened and he said come on it's like okay it's yeah it's scary but we did it and then you know we did highlands and then it yeah. was like there was a situation that came up and we yeah. had to move deal on with that. do deal with that and, yeah and we learned and we grew there and but i just knew there was something more there's something more personal i wanted more yeah. one and one yeah. even though i had it yeah it's it's kind of funny though like as humans i find as a rule it's probably not absolute but we don't like change mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. um even if you were moving from one house to another or getting a new car, you're still kind of longing for the old one, even though you know it's better to get the new one, house, whatever. There's just something that seems to be in most people. Yeah. And so even though he was calling you, it's like you're being removed from something that was comfortable and made sense, right? Mm -hmm. That's all I knew. That's all you knew? Was church. Yeah. You know. And so what were you going to do? It started becoming 
just a place of gathering. Right. You know, just hanging out, not something that had to be, I don't know, it just, it just changed. Something just changed and it was just, you know. Social club. Yeah. That's what it became. And I thought there's got to be more to this. Yeah. There it, is more to yeah, this. Yeah. Where is God in the midst of all mm -hmm. these things, right? Mm -hmm. And I want something. It was just something I was having to deal with. Yeah. And I just thought, well, we'll back away, Lord. We'll just seek you now. Let's just totally seek you now. And then shortly after that, COVID hit. Yeah. You know, when we lost many loved ones in the midst of all that, too, you know. Right. Dear ones, you know. So, yeah. Um, that was another wake-up call, kind of. Not wake-up, but more of a, yeah, there's got to be more here, Lord. Yeah. I call it course corrections. Mm -hmm. Things happen and they change your course. Yes. But they're actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. And you say a lot of times we get presents and they're in terrible packages, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they get us where we need to go. Because mm -hmm. without all that, we wouldn't be where you are. Exactly. So it was all beneficial, mm -hmm. but yet painful. It was. Yeah, there's pain on the way, but um, without it, we'd still be there. Mm -hmm. But again, I knew I had to listen to what Father was saying. Let's come away with me. Come away with me. Let's come. I was like, okay, I trust you. Yeah. You know? It really is all about intimacy and God desiring to take us into that place of, um, you know, intimate fellowship. And not being fake no more. I think I was trying being fake for the last little while. Yeah. While we were still in London because it was just, I wasn't satisfied where I was. I wanted more of the God. I wanted, and I, he was revealing more of himself, more of his heart, more of his freedom. Mm -hmm. And he was starting to reveal things to me that I was like, in the Bible, about revelations. And it was like, oh my gosh, it isn't what I thought it was, Lord. Right. When I started reading it, and I hadn't met you guys again for right. a while. So God kind of took us for about a year or more without any fellowship with any church because of COVID. Right. And uh, so it was just pretty much me and him on the back deck. So me. do you see what I'm saying there? Like COVID mm -hmm. came to UC as a bad present, mm -hmm. but it was a gift because of course corrected. Yeah. yeah. So that's what happens with people. Yeah. And I had to seek mm -hmm. him. Yeah. And really find out that. And he moved on some of my belief systems too. Yeah, well, you know that saying that you <clears throat> you can't put new wine in an old wine skin. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. The new wine is the truth, the revelation I call divine reality, and he begins to give you some as he leads you, and all of a sudden it doesn't fit in the container that you once had because that container's full of the old. Yeah, and um, people aren't that quick to want to change, as mm -hmm. I said, right? Oh, and that was my like I, I think you had mentioned to me one time because I. When I got with you, I was mm. you and Sue saying that um, my heart's cry was do whatever you need to do to bring me to you and to be that real. And I want the truth and mm. I want to be real and I want to be who you made me to be. Right. And not have to be, you know, so, earning my keep or. Well, it's kind of like putting a round peg in a square hole. It mm -hmm. doesn't fit. Yeah. It does for a while mm -hmm. or trying, but then you realize that. This just isn't it, no. you know, because you're looking for that new wine, that real, that experience, the experiential, like I always say about, um, it's not about reading about a kiss. It's actually kissing somebody, right? Mm -hmm. The experience, experience yes. with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's totally different now. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. So there's no real gift. Well, I, I was going to say, let me get one sec here. There's a, um, whoops. What you're talking about is similar to uh, the experience St. John of the Cross had where he says, In the inner wine cellar, I drank of my beloved. And when I went abroad through this valley, I no longer knew anything. And I lost the herd that I was following. Mm -hmm. So it's like all of a sudden there's this, because the wine's within us. Yep. Right? Yeah. It's Christ in us. Mm -hmm. And so we, we begin to experience this. I mean, we've always been taught it's coming to us from outside, but it's within. And um, all of a sudden you begin to experience it. That's what happened to John. And he's starting to experience this wine. And he says he went abroad. That means what you said, uh, come with me. Mm -hmm. Come away with me. Mm -hmm. 
right? And through all the all this valley, because it was a valley to him, meaning feeling removed. Well, there was a prophetic word I had given. Now you're speaking, mm. saying that is yeah. You were going to go all that. Who sees my beloved running towards you when you Solomon? Been, yeah, and you're um in the desert, right? Who is this coming up out of the desert, yeah. leaning on her beloved? Yeah, yeah. And I had that word, and I thought. I don't want to go to the desert, I know. Lord, but it was the best thing. Yeah. I mean, I got stripped away of so much of friends and <laughs> so much. I know. Friends had died and just there was a lot of stuff going on at that point. And it was just, wow, Lord. And it's very hard um, emotionally uh, and relationally, but yet you're not alone as you walk. And um, I always look at it like... Um, if Moses hadn't went up the mountain, we'd all still be standing at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So somebody's got to decide uh, that it's possible, number one, and two, to do it Yeah. in spite of everything, mm -hmm. right? Um, and he's so good. I mean, the wine, the the joy, the feeling of his love, like you, you began to f in the communion there, mm -hmm. which is funny, eh? The love was in the communion, eat oh, my flesh, drink yeah. my blood. Yeah, it's that experience just... again, or you have nothing in me. Mm -hmm. So same with John here. John's going through this, and he goes, <clears throat> I no longer knew anything meant he had to let go of what he previously, the way he understood it. Kind of like in the early days, the way you were getting it from the church, about mm -hmm. this is the rules, this is the way mm -hmm. it is. That's what happened. He had to let go of that. That's why he says, now I know nothing. And he had to leave the herd that he was following. That was wherever you are with people, mm -hmm. they don't want to change and they're not looking. They feel they've already arrived. They're just waiting for him to come back in the clouds. Yeah. And so what are you going to do? Then he says, um, there he gave me his breast. There he taught me a sweet and living knowledge mm -hmm. see this is where that revelation comes mm -hmm. and uh, his breast is like a baby drinking out of mother's breast mm -hmm. there's an intimacy there but also a place of feeling completely um, vulnerable you're having to to be you're helpless yeah but totally yet we totally rely on totally it. relying yeah. but comforted mm -hmm. and he begins to feed you mm -hmm. the real truth the divine reality and then he says, I gave myself to him, keeping nothing back. There I promised to be his bride. And that's powerful. That's really talking about um, the, the union, right? Mm -hmm. in the, that's the marriage that is in Revelations. It's not about in the by and by. It's mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. That's what he desires is to bring us back into that place where our spirit, which is his spirit, one with his, becomes in union to become what one, one flesh mm -hmm. one temple right and we begin to walk in the way we were created like you kept saying i <clears throat> i wanted to be the nor that wants to be filled with joy and that knows this intimate love when i was 10. Mm -hmm. see that was a gift to you because it's rooted like seed that was growing inside you to bear fruit after its kind mm -hmm. right and anything else, it only suffices for a short time. Yeah, and it was just always the because church. Because of the fellowship. The, always the church and stuff that was not blaming everyone. It was just no. what they were taught and what they've... We what were them, needed. right? Yeah. Doing the same thing. Doing the same thing, exactly. Yeah. But it was just... I just had to follow him. Yeah. That was just a desire, like, you know, when you date. When you start dating and it's just... You fall in love with Eddie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like I could hardly wait to see him. And yeah, like I was saying the other day, he came in a winter storm to see me. The roads were closed, and all of a sudden, our mom said, "There's somebody at the door," and I opened up the door, and there he was. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And that's the way it is with the Lord. It you is. Know? It's like when he shows up, and he's just, you mm. know, tells me he loves me, and it's okay. And yeah, like today, it's like he's like, "It's okay, Nor." We're doing okay. We're doing all right. I'm driving the car home from London. And it's like, I said, oh, my God, help me. I said, you take the wheel, Jesus, or something <laughs> happens. He goes, we are. We're doing it now. Uh -huh. Okay, good. All right. Because yeah. he's in me. Yes. You know, and I've told that to people when I'm out shopping. It's like, yeah, me and Jesus right now, we're 
picking out an outfit. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> he is. And he helps me do my hair and do my makeup. For sure. He does everything with me because he is in me. And yes. Same with the Father. Yes. You know, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And no. I get that scripture now. Because yeah. I wasn't into the Bible verses and stuff, so I don't know a whole lot. Yeah. Over the years, I should because it was like, you know, you had to have your memory but, verses. But, but you know what? I think the reason you probably don't is not because you weren't studious. I think it was because it was always um, like a um, correction. Oh, it was. See, if you're getting correction all the time, like somebody slapping you a lot, mm -hmm. it's like after a while, you keep back from getting slapped. Because mm -hmm. that's all you see it as. And that's all I see, the, you know, how I would call the religious church is sometimes. You know, you talk about this and that, and they got to throw a scripture at you. It's like, yeah. uh, well, if you really did know the Father, why would he even say that? To you? Yeah, exactly. Like, like, really? Yeah. You know, why yeah. don't you just love people? You know? That's like us bottom. working at the bunker and yeah. me working at the shelter. I mean, I was thinking that the other night, mm. you know, when we were, or I was at. In the 90s. At, yeah, yeah, working at the shelters. And and yeah. the guys would come in from the old Kent Hotel. There was a lot of homeless. No, I wouldn't call them homeless because they're living at the hotel. But, you know, there were old drunks that used yeah, to yeah. come in. And, you know, we'd be making up a pot of soup. Maddie, she was there. Yeah. You know, she'd be making up a thing of soup and these guys would come in you know just not for food but they come in for the fellowship and they felt the love and and even at the bunker mm -hmm. you know when we work with the youth down there yeah. we weren't preaching at them we were just no. loving them where they were at and yeah. even years later after the bunker closed i'd run into people and that have grown up and they're like nor I remember you i was stoned out of my brain <laughs> puking my guts out and you yeah. come in the bathroom and you're like you want a sausage and they were like oh <laughs> so more. I said, I clean that toilet. So if you puke, you don't have a beard. And they're like, oh, thanks, Nor. Oh. You know, so, you know, they just yep. remember the unconditional love. Exactly. You know, and same with the, the other, you know, yeah. when I worked at the House of Blessing, they were that way too. They remember, re that, remember that. The that's love, the thing, the love. The fellow, fellowship. Yes. And the acceptance. Because yeah. a lot of people came in there and they were, didn't have their teeth brushed, their hair wasn't clean, mm. they didn't shower, mm. but we were there just loving them. Yeah. You know, is that not Christ? Is it is. Well, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, love your enemies. So that means everybody. Mm -hmm. And then he says, whatever you do to the least of these, you're doing to me. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about a unity that we're not aware of yet. Mm -hmm. We're beginning to understand, but haven't come into the kiss reality of that one yet. Mm -hmm. But But when we begin to see it, will begin to understand that it was Jesus you were ministering to at the bunker. It was Jesus you were ministering to at the House of Blessing. It's Jesus. Well, even going, you know, we do outreaches in Toronto or something, you know, when we were going down for a fresh wind, was it? Yep. You know, and there'd be uh, transsexuals there, homosexuals. I mean, right. the children of God. Exactly. You know, and my heart would just break, and I just... We were ministering to this one who was going through the change, change and yeah. you know we said, "Why don't you come back?" Because just the love he could feel it, so he came back. And mm -hmm. but you know what? He got wounded. Yeah. And my heart just broke. I thought, "Oh my God!" Mm. You know, this is a child of God. Yeah. And you guys supposedly are ones that love Jesus. You rejected him. When you see that Jesus says, "I'm the light of the world," and he came into the darkness. Yeah. That means that darkness is blindness. So if people are doing things in the darkness, they're blind. Is it who they really are? Mm -hmm. No. 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 So if the fear of the Lord, it says that Jesus delighted in the fear of the Lord. To me, mm -hmm. the fear of the Lord is seen through his eyes mm -hmm. and not judging by what I see. We judge by what we see. So if we don't, because judging is concluding, making a conclusion. Yep. If we don't do that, but we love unconditionally, right, and we look through the eyes of the Father to see who the person really is, mm -hmm. then um, what will happen is it gives God the opportunity, because we're moving in love, which is a higher frequency, mm -hmm. it's able to begin to change people. Yep. What does it mean in the Scripture when it says that they um, took their weapons and broke them into plowshares? The war ended. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's similar to what Greg Braden says. I love what he says. He says that they're going to throw a war 
and nobody's going to show up. <laughs> I love that. It's like all of a sudden people wake up and they go, well, I'm not going to kill anybody. I don't care what your problem is. I'm mm -hmm. not going to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. They deserve to be alive like I do. Yeah. And, and then we don't uh, cause that separation where the Lord says there is no division in my kingdom. So if there's a bunch of division, I tend to say it's not his kingdom. Exactly. And if it's not love, it's not him. That's it. You know, I it's, used to hate, you know, doing the the phone thing and phone people up or going over oh tracks. Man. And it's like, oh, my gosh. I know. You I know? know. And even when we were in London one time, we yeah. went out for lunch with some people. And, yeah. and we were, you know, ministering to this guy that owned the restaurant. And, uh, mm. you know, he would always see Ed and I come in and, and uh, be like, oh, there they are. And he he's the manager so he'd make sure he'd come over how are you guys doing and, yeah and you know gab away and we're, we were building a friendship with him you know not preaching or nothing just being us and yeah you know we joke with him and whatever and so he'd look forward to us well we went in after church one sunday with a bunch and well then it, it we sitting down all of a sudden the bunch that were with the one girl goes oh, well, we love jesus what about you and and we just do you know jesus and i was just like oh my lord really she, yeah. really she was doing her she was doing her thing and yeah. i just thought oh he just kind of looked at us and I, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know her <laughs> <laughs> i just went yeah we've been yeah we were in church and yeah. he goes oh okay. <laughs> yeah but we went back a, a few times later and he was okay with us but it was just you know yeah we were with the group he didn't come around much <laughs> and and we definitely understand <laughs> yeah what she was doing yeah, she we was, did that yes we did it, it's yes, just did. that when you understand that all things belong to the Lord, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's not about scalps. It's not about me looking good. It's not about getting them into something they're already in. Yeah. That's why this is called the Great Awakening. Mm -hmm. We're awakening to who we are, where we are, yeah. and whose we are. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what was started to happen to you then yeah. after that communion, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then you had to come away, mm -hmm. and you were searching, and you spent about a year, which was really good because yep. COVID put you in your yep. house. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I'm not saying COVID was good for anybody that's having issues. <laughs> no. I'm saying that all things work together for good. It's either we believe that or don't, mm -hmm. right? And <clears throat> that then, uh, I remember you calling me. You'd seen one of the podcasts from the journey, right? Yeah, because God had just shown me some stuff about revelations, and I thought, mm. no, this can't be. It was totally different from what I ever read before. Yeah. And then I started thinking, you know, he started showing me. Nor I, you know what happened is mm. my brother, who had schizophrenia, right, was suffering so wrong, hard, you know, with that disease. Yeah. And he was coming to the end of himself because of his health. Right. And I had to put a, a thing between us. So I hadn't seen him for that one year. So I was saying, God, what about hell? My poor brother mm. has been suffering in hell here. here on earth. Yeah. Are you going to send my brother to hell? Because if that's who you are, yeah. this, this ain't cool, man. This see, is not see, this cool. is one of the questionings that yep. you start to question. Yep. Yep. Do the math, I call it. Yeah. And I was getting quite frustrated because I knew. Yeah. where my brother was at and it was like he's gonna die soon and if, surely to goodness you won't send him to hell all right well then he showed me revelations and then he showed me a few more things and i was like oh my god <laughs> and he was like he said there's no hell nor i'm not sending him to hell right why would i your dad send someone i love to hell would you send your own child to hell because she screwed up exactly have I sent you to hell yet, Nora? Because you screwed up <laughs> pretty we good. we screwed up, right? We screwed up pretty good. And you mm. even went into witchcraft and, you know, denounced him and blah, blah, blah. Did I kill you? Yeah. Did I send you to hell? No. You know, and then when he did die, it was like, wow. There was such a peace. I think you were at the funeral, mm -hmm. right? There was such a peace. It was like, I knew that I knew that I knew that. Yeah. God did not send him to hell. No, <laughs> He's but now very much alive. Now you had the issue though <laughs> yeah. of yeah, but yet the yet great I, divide, right? Yes, and I thought, who do I talk to about this? And then mm. I was watching a podcast that right. he did, and it was like, oh my gosh! So I phoned you up. Yeah, 
with crying and gnashing of teeth. Yes. Just, oh my, what's going on here, man? I don't understand what's going on with me right now because everything I had believed was not so anymore. It's like he threw it all on the table yeah. and wanted to teach you yeah, about it. Yeah, put the whole cards out. Yep, let's this have a it. look at this. I was like, oh dear. Yeah. But yet, deep inside, I knew. But yet, I was afraid to, you know, yeah, <laughs> look at that. But and yet, I knew. You didn't want to rock the boat, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. And that was a, that's a really hard part at the beginning is <clears throat> you're waking up really to grace. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And what the cross is. Yeah. And then you begin to, uh, for me, I went through a period. That's why I could relate to where you were when you called me is because I went through a period where I seemed angry. Yeah. Now, I wasn't angry at the church or people, but it appeared that way. Yeah. Because I was angry at religion. Yeah. Right? It had stolen from me mm -hmm. all these years. Mm -hmm. All it's, my life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But but as I work, walk through it in, in the grace of God, I began to recognize, but by the grace there go I, then I began to realize that um, if it wasn't for the journey, I wouldn't be where I am. And how can I understand somebody? Yeah. It's like when you're talking to somebody and they say that uh, a mother and she says that her son got killed in a car accident and he's dead. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, if Fine. death hasn't touched you in some way mm -hmm. and you go, oh, I understand. It doesn't mean anything. Mm -mm. But if you've walked through pain of that, whether you're losing a mother, a father, a child, a grandparent, uh, anybody close to you, then you you know the grieving process and you understand not to be flippant and go, I understand, brother, mm -hmm. you're going to be good. No, you got to walk through this period and comfort them in that time, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's the same kind of thing. It's like you understand why you went through it and that it's good that you understand now because if i hadn't walked through and for me it was like at least 30 years mm -hmm. right if i hadn't walked through it then i wouldn't have an understanding of where people are because i lived there but now as i'm awakening to the kiss mm -hmm. or like what's happened to saint john of the cross yes. i'm sending up the mountain like moses to this place of shekinah glory face to face with god um i understand now um and so you call me and i hear it in your voice and i recognize it right away because <laughs> i lived it right yeah. and i had other people coming up to yeah. me i'm just ticked off because i spent this many years and then and it's like no 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 you, you'll get this you'll get there it mm -hmm. just takes a little time till grace really kind of well it puts you in the wine for a bit right and you get it right yeah yeah. I found that anyway. Mm -hmm. Would you say that was part of the process you were going through at that time, right? Yeah, and it was weird too because I'd be looking on YouTube and I, mm -hmm. I found about two, another two people, that mm -hmm. three, that were into the grace. Yeah. And, and they're all kind of thinking and talking what the Lord was revealing to me. Yeah. Because I don't sit and read the Bible every day. Well, it gave you that, I, that assurance now yeah. that you weren't out in the field somewhere. Yeah, because yeah. it was like, holy crap, there's more on YouTube and there was more on Facebook. <laughs> and it was like, and they were exactly thinking, I'd be pondering a question. All of a sudden, like every day I was on there just searching and searching yeah. every day, just getting what I could. Hungry. Was like, I was like, yeah, just ravishing, just anything I could find yes. on grace yeah. and love and freedom. And It's amazing, isn't it? It was. And it was like every day. For a good year, I was just finding I was getting freer and freer and freer, and wow. yeah, it was awesome. You know, to find a group that was okay. Yeah, this is all right. This is all right. I can be me. I can start. Like I felt like I was coming out of a cave. Yeah, you know, I was in some place, and now I'm coming out. And the sunshine was starting to shine on you, right? Yeah, on your heart and freedom. Yeah, freedom that I don't have to work at somebody I know that's dying of something or cancer or something it's like i'm not going oh no i gotta go to him brother and i gotta get him saved it's yeah. like no. no god he's yours you got him man you got him i know you know even you know different ones that i know that are walking the walk as we know in terms right it's like huh, god's got him yeah it was years ago i had an issue with uh 
Mother Teresa. Because mm. I'd heard this story where she would she would go to a place like that was in a war torn area and there were Muslims dying, right? It's like in a uh, what do you call it? Like a medic tent, mm -hmm. and they were dying. And she went there and she just comforted them. She didn't preach at them. She comforted them. And I was like, "What are you doing? You're." helping them go to hell mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but it wasn't until i started to wake up that i recognized oh my gosh the love of god was comforting them as they were transitioning it wasn't anything about putting the the peg in the yeah. hole you know what yeah, i mean yeah. but it was about them waking up to the love of god there are people there's another story this is a great one there was a cannibal right the guy's a cannibal and he came out of the forest, out of this forest, and met with these these Christians. And he, uh, um, they started to talk to him. You know what they're thinking, mm -hmm. right? And he goes, "Oh, I know him. <laughs> I've been walking with him for years. I just didn't know what his name was." Right. See. Yeah. yeah. So was it Jesus? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like he was walking with this guy as he was waking him up. Maybe he hadn't got to the place yet of not knowing because he grew up all around people that did that ate human flesh mm -hmm. but god is at work it says that it rains on the just and, and the, the unjust, unjust yeah. and rain is a sign of of uh, the water above the firmament it's coming down mm -hmm. so that's conscious awareness and so god is pouring out conscious awareness on all of humanity yeah. whether we uh receive it or not is up to us but yeah. once we get over our you got to join my club and we're actually realize what what mother Teresa was doing about you know what st. John of the cross was doing it's about the unconditional love of father I've always been a people person yeah. you know when you were speaking that I just was remembering you know growing up over the years I've just loved being around people and just being me and I was always yeah. one that was always mom always said you were always the life of the party <laughs> you know people would be saying can we have Nora come to our birthday party or come to our part we're doing a party or because mm -hmm. she's such a life of the party and I was you know until I came a Christian see that's a Learned, sad thing until I realized oh no I can't drink I can't do this I can't do that I can't it was, yeah, but but it was like there was no you can do this I lost, you can do yeah, this but I lost myself yeah I, I mean I would do it behind you know yeah you know, but you still had to live with the law. Yeah, but I lived with the law and the consequences. Think I'm going to stand before God and He's going to show everything Re I've done to everybody. everybody. And I'm like, I'm doomed. I'm, I'm doomed. Done. <laughs> <laughs> done, Lord. That's not going to be a good day. <laughs> not good, Lord. Yeah. Uh, I'm done. But mm. when He was like, I'm okay with you. Yeah. You know, I'm okay with you. <sighs> Isn't it amazing? Yeah. It's such a different. It's freedom. It's freedom. It? Yeah. It's well, that's what he says. You will know the truth, and the, and the truth, truth will make you free. Yeah, yeah. It's truth is light. And that song, I want to be me. Yes. I want to be me. I know. I'm starting to be free to be me. That's it. <laughs> that's know? it. You need to, because yeah. God created you uniquely. Well, I'm unique, as he, all right. <laughs> but that's the beauty, yeah. each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And he... Uh, put gifts and all kinds of really wild things within us because mm -hmm. we're immortal beings. Yes. But those things are hidden until we wake up to who we are. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, these things start to activate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the wine's going to do nothing but get better, right? I know. It has to. That's why he's called a multi dimensional God yeah. in the heavens mm -hmm. because we're awakening from glory to glory. It has to yeah so you're on the the glory train oh yeah right uh -huh. and you're beginning to experience the love of god like never before yeah. that that was like he i like it the jethro tall song where the mm. the one about the train yeah that god took the the break from it and then away they go and away they go <laughs> yeah it feels like that doesn't it it does so really now i understand those words much better um what saint or uh back in the day what they called the great awakening mm -hmm. wasn't what we thought and it's going on now mm -hmm. it's been going on for well for me since 2006 uh really probably uh something powerful on the globe since 12 because of the mind calendar they didn't know what was going on from there 
but that wasn't the end. It was the beginning yeah. of an awakening God was doing on planet Earth. And there's so many belief systems out there, but there's one voice. Yeah. And if we'd li listen to that one true voice, like St. John did, he goes, so now I occupy my soul and all my energy in his service. I no longer tend the herd, mm -hmm. nor have I any other work now that my every act is love. Yeah. This coming from a um, Spanish mystic that knew about that kiss. Yeah. And he's telling us, this is what's going to happen to you, right? We start drinking from the breast of God and <clears throat> we're entering into that wine because I probably we're going to find out that we are the wine, mm. God's wine. Yeah. He's pouring out. Yeah. Mm hmm on the earth yeah. to the people mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's a beautiful thing it is a wonderful thing so the awakening carries on and you're still traveling in uh the grace message yep. which never gets old nope. oh i wanted to say this about that i wanted to say that um there's a term let me think of what it is paul used the term for grace but in the original text it's um uh, let me think of it father what is that because um, it's a term that people used um, against grace that are grace I mean they're, they're Christians so they came through the cross but yet then they started speaking against grace because of I guess the legalism that's still in people's mouths right and they, they had this term oh I almost had it um, Oh, not greasy grace, not, um, I know I've heard everything. Right? Yeah, really, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like if there's there's a term for um, too much grace, or I can't think of the word at the moment. It may come to me in the next couple of seconds. But it's actually what the very word Paul used, if you can believe that. So now I hear... Uh, people using this word and I think wow they're quoting Paul and they don't even know it that that's what we're supposed to have mm -hmm. we're supposed to have this you know dump truck of load of grace which carries us into the truth mm -hmm. and then the truth carries us back to the Father yeah you know truth makes us free mm -hmm. we come back into the life the immortal life of God it's a journey that's why we're here on the journey yeah right yeah it's a wonderful journey yeah some days. <laughs> Some days. There's, there's struggles. There's days. Yes, there is, because there's still that eagle yes. that wants to rise up here. Right, which is basically our the, the matrix of our mind mm -hmm. that believes that we're living separate from God. That's what the sin was, mm -hmm. separation, right? Mm -hmm. In our minds. Yeah. Only in our minds. There's just still the, still the odd little thing. Oh, yeah. Still there, that, like... Is that right, or am I really? I know. And he's very gay, gracious and kind. It's like, yeah. And I'll have my temper tantrums, and he waits, and it's like, yeah. you done? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move forward now. Yeah. You know, he's merciful and kind and loving. And oh, man, there's nobody like him. <gasps> he's a great daddy. Incredible. He's my daddy. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's <laughs> my daddy. He's awesome. Uh, man. Yeah. You can't take him away. No, no, that's the thing, is religion tries to. Um, that's what Philip meant when he said you can't translate the name of Yeshua. He didn't mean call him, Je can't call him Jesus. It means you can't create a false image right. of who he's not mm -hmm. and worship that. Yeah. Because that's not him. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about is he came from above. He came mm -hmm. to bring us the, the light, the truth of God, and we can uh, choose to follow him or create a God after our own image. If we're victims, we create a God of justice, mm -hmm. and then we want everybody to worship that, and the victims all gather at the foot of that false God. Yeah. I don't care what you call him. It doesn't make him him. And that was someone else had said, well, I think maybe you're kind of being deceived. I said, why would Holy Spirit deceive me? He's the spirit of truth. Yeah. He's not going to do that. No. He never has. That's because people trust more 
in theology and history of what they've been told, mm -hmm. which is tradition of man, than they do God himself to lead us. I have found a father who is very forgiving, very kind, very loving, like very, I screw up a lot. I get mad at him. I scream at him. It's like, I want this done this way. I want it done that way. And I don't. Think I screw that... up. And he's like, I got this, man. I got it. I got the, Sue gave me the word. Okay. Hyper grace. Yes, that's it. Oh, that's hyper grace. Yep. That is the very word Paul used. Can you yep. believe that? Yep. So yeah, we want hyper grace. Thank yep. you very much. Bring her on. <laughs> Bring her on. Yeah, back that truck up. Yeah. Pour it out. It doesn't fit in, in legalism. No. When you're under the law of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and not the tree of life, mm -hmm. then everything looks that way, yep. and that's what you're serving. And whatever laws you, you apply to people, you get applied to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So better to um, come out. I used to say, um, I best be merciful, because I need a truckload of mercy, yeah, right? Exactly. So I needed to understand um, that God is a lot better than I think he is. He's kinder than I think he is. Oh, yes. He's, um, I love that in the shack. When that guy, um, he comes before, it's supposed to be the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. remember, in the cave? Mm -hmm. And she says, um, well, she goes, <clears throat> you have two, two children. You get to choose one to go to heaven and one to go to hell. It's up to you, whatever you like. <laughs> but he, <laughs> she was showing... <laughs> The father, yeah. that you really think the father chooses one over the other? He's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're the pope. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Or the, the least on the street somewhere. Mm -hmm. God views them the same. Yeah. It's not by what we do. It's by what, who he is. And that when we are allow ourselves to be shaped into that and, and become a reflection or a mirror of him, then it's not even to get quote unquote brownie points it's to <laughs> it's to walk with him which then allows him to love others right i want to be daddy's little girl again that's it man you know. that's it that's all it is that's all i ever wanted yeah you're in a great place yeah yeah i just keep saying i just want you daddy mm. you know and he's showing me more and more and you can trust that voice that's inside you mm -hmm. because that's the creator you can trust him. He will walk you through this maze. Oh, yeah. When I screw up majorly, it's just, you know, I've come bawling, squalling, and he's just like, it's okay, man. I'll take care of it. When I mess things up, you know, yeah. I mess things up, and he's still, I got it. I'll fix it for you, Nor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I screwed it up. It's like, okay, I'll fix it. Yeah. Isn't that what daddies do? Yeah. It's like, I broke this. Eh. Yeah, we'll glue I'm sorry. That. This is your prize thing. It's yeah. all right. I'll fix it. Yeah. It's all right. You're more important than this. That's right. What you is know? your value? And that's what I try to teach even my own grandkids. You know, it's like, yeah, you're more valuable than things. Yeah. You know, and I try to show them that love and people around me, I hope, and sometimes I screw up. But yeah. I probably will screw up right to my, hopefully not my last breath. But no. <laughs> maybe, you won't maybe, maybe you won't have a last breath. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. yeah. Get transfigured like Christ. Oh, that'd be awesome. That's that's that his would, desire. You yeah. know that, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not. He's not the one that created death. Yeah. We are. Mm -hmm. We believe in it. Oh, we see it all around yeah. us. That's it's pretty, what we're raised in. Yes. Yeah. So we have to swim up current. <laughs> yeah. Against the current. Yeah. And that's why he says, "Narrow is the road that leads to life, uh, and difficult the way, and few find it." Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it can't be found. And that's what I used to do. I be said that too by teachers that you're always going against the current, or always not following the. You always had to be the outside the box, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Color in that box, like no, 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 no. That ain't that ain't who I am, and I'm See, starting to like. That's who beautiful, I am. It's man. Like you know, I'm just. Yeah, color outside the box. Mm -hmm. That's where he is. Meet yeah. me outside the gate. Mm -hmm. Even tonight, trying to get my hair right and doing my makeup and what top to wear. I'm going through all these yeah. goals, and the <laughs> Lord's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like. <laughs> Well, I want to look good on the camera. I want my hair nice. I want this, you know. Yeah. He's, just be you, Nor. You're okay. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I am okay, Lord. We're all right, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. It was like, oh, well. 
Yeah. yeah I've got the headphones on, rack my hair. I'm Took sorry about hour. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got Ori and we give you the headset, yeah. right? It's all right. I don't know. We got to fix that thing, whatever the heck that is. That's cool. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's good, eh? It is very good. Love Peaceful. your presence, Father. Mm -hmm. um, anything else that you would like to say or uh, how to tie this up? Any thoughts? Just to be. Just to be. Yeah, everybody to be. That's why we're called beings, right? Mm -hmm. To let, be. To let be the great still. I am be I am. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's good. Be real. That was the other thing, too. Yeah. I remember that group that used to come to Fresh Wren that sang it to, to be real. Oh, yeah. Um, David Roos. Yeah. And them. That yeah, was, gift to be real. That was one of my things. I thought, God, I want to be real. Yeah. And I had a struggle with it because of my own stuff in my life, but I always wanted just to be real. And you know? anything else is just lying to ourselves. God knows, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He's waiting for us. And that's what that song was about. He said, now that you're uh, speaking the truth, you're being real. I can live with that. I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. It's all the rest of the maze. Yeah. Because he's not, it's all, it's all an illusion. So why would he bother? Yeah. You know, speaking into the illusion. Mm -hmm. so. Like I can be really peed off at him and he's perfectly fine. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah, eh? you know, he's he's dad. <laughs> yeah. It's like, have, have your tenter tantrum and, okay, we're done. Let's move on. Let's move on now. Come on, let's go have some fun. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> well, thank you, Nora. I really appreciate you coming tonight and sharing your story mm -hmm. of, of, of your journey. And you're still on it, as yep. we all are. Mm -hmm. But just that real, real journey of, you know, Especially as a child, because children are much yes. more open, right? And they're innocent. Mm -hmm. And then having to go through and conform and conform to these things and then rebel against it. And yet uh, that wasn't a bad thing, if you think in the long run. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, go through uh, what looked to be good, but still teaching a lot of the same stuff, mm -hmm. just in different clothes. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, be uh, begin to uh, awaken to the grace of God, right? Mm -hmm. The hyper grace the hyper. of God. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Is anybody uh, got any questions or anything they want to share? And uh, we got Brianna on here. Bless you. And Chelsea and Tasha, mm -hmm. Eddie. Who else could you see? Ashley. Ashley. Yeah. All right. Mitch. And Mitch. He's an old friend. Beautiful. Sorry, not old, but you know. You've known him a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not old. You've no. known him a little <laughs> yeah, while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, one, one of the things, I just went in with this. <clears throat> you always wonder about certain things, like what we're learning about the revealing of Scripture. And the one Scripture says, <clears throat> naked we came into the world and naked will leave. Well, what that's talking about is prior to the veils being put over us, mm. the skins, Yes. see it's mm -hmm. language, skins, um, where we became blinded. Did you say slanguage? Huh? Did you say slanguage? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did I? The, the uh, yeah, we're going back in again now. The, uh, <coughs> um, hmm. The veils that cause us to be blind. Mm -hmm. That if we're willing to walk up the mountain like Moses, they get taken away. Yeah. Glory to glory. Mm -hmm. And glory means discover my light, discover my truth, mm -hmm. the new wine, the um, divine reality. Right? And as we do, we become naked once again, which means completely open to seeing all things in the spirit world that's right here, right now. Yeah. It's all that's around awesome. us. We awesome. just need to get get these skins off, right? <laughs> it's a good scripture. It's not what I thought. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be naked when I go over there and then, has anybody got clothes? <laughs> you know? Yeah, like who knows what people think, but that is what he showed me. It's like beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing, right? Kind of like that picture you posted of me. Yes. <laughs> That's a great picture, man. 
I've been there. I know I have. You know, because we've had, you know, in renewal, and we've been having so many spiritual things happening and God yeah. showing us stuff. But yeah. as soon as I saw that picture, I went, oh, I know I've been there, Lord, whether awake or, you know, you, dreaming. You, that's just, your home. Yeah. Uh, no See, wonder I feel longing for home. Yes, right? it's yes. Here. See, with the, in that picture, it's the angel opening up the veil, yeah. that final door, mm -hmm. and you can see the two people walking yeah. in. And so <clears throat> what we're trying to do is just awaken to what we already know. That's why Jesus said, do this, yeah. eat my flesh, drink my blood. It's talking about uh, partaking of the light, yeah. the revelation truth. Mm -hmm. He said, in remembrance of me yeah. that's because we've known him for millions of years we're very good friends with him mm -hmm. but we've forgotten because of the veil yeah so we think we don't know i see i've been asking him to remind me who i am yeah just when him and i were just him and i yep you know look out Okay, here we come. Here comes Nor. Yep. <laughs> right through that door. Right through that door. Here comes Nor through the door. And you'll be standing there with wide arms. Wide arms. Wide arms. <laughs> yeah. 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 He will. He will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so will a lot of other people that are as uh, drunk as he is. Yes. <laughs> All right. Mighty fine wine. Mighty fine wine. All right. Well, bless everybody. Thank you for coming tonight. And for those that will listen to this post, enjoy mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy the wine. Yes. Till next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>